do their pastorship. Give them a hearty amen. Bless you, God. Let's lift your hands for a moment if you could. Let's lift your hands for a moment. Raise your hand and close your eyes. For so true that hits me, the Lord say, this is the day of miracles. This is the day of miracles. This is the day of breakthrough. This is the day of breakthrough. This is the day of healing. This is the day of healing. Through my songs. Through my words. Through my words. As you receive them. As you receive them, as you receive them, you will grow, you will grow, mature, mature. And, prosper. and prosper. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Um, I guess I'm supposed to speak. I guess whatever. A brief word, a word of encouragement. Whatever I can do, because uh, after all that, it ain't much you can say through all the lyrics and the songs and the boom. It ain't much you can do after all that. But God is good. I'm so grateful to be here. Um, after being in ministry some 27 years. I had a chance to travel all over the world, uh, been to Africa, uh, been to Germany, different countries, preaching the gospel. Um, so after 27 years, although I look 28, thank God for the testimony, I look 28. Um, after that many times of years, and I've seen something awesome in Africa. And I was in Africa, my zine, this is about seven years ago, and we had got to the service at about 11 o'clock. And we got there at about 11 o'clock at the service, and I want to tell you guys the truth, they worship. They worship went on until 9 o'clock that night. 9 o'clock that night. So I'm a pastor. I'm there to speak. I'm trying to hold my faith. And I see a little three-year-old girl. She's just steady crying and worshiping. And I'm looking like, I can't let this little three-year-old girl be me. I got to worship hard than this little three-year-old girl. But she was going in. And I seen then, here in America, here in America, we take worship, we take the presence of God for granted. When you go to Africa and countries like that, you can't preach about a Mercedes B. You can't preach about having a big house. You can't preach about having gold, bling, bling, and silver. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear how to survive through the next day. They want to know how to survive to the next meal. They want to know where they're going to get their next breakthrough. They don't have doctors that can easily deal with cancer and AIDS. They need doctors to deal with tumors in their necks. So you can't preach this American gospel over them. It is the gospel that represents power, grace, and anointing to get over there. And what God is doing in this season, what he's doing, he's raising up us as a people that can take the gospel of Jesus Christ, the power, the resurrection, and the strength across the world. And we are grateful, we are blessed to be in this country to do what God got us doing. And we can speak it, teach it, preach it, sing it, rap it, act it, and we cannot be judged for it or condemned for it. Amen. So let's give a Lord of hand praise for that real fast. If you, should, if you like freedom, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. There's freedom. So I'm going to give you some scriptures because I don't think it's, in, it's in relevant for us to be rapping, singing, dancing, and the church don't go to work. I don't care how many CDs you buy, how many songs you get into. You must develop a life of learning the word for yourself. Because when the rapper or the artist sing, you can connect with the word, you connect with the song, and you can know if they're rappers of God or the devil. Come on, help me out, church. Help me out. Amen. If there's no word in the message, there's no power in the message. So when you begin to hear any artist or any entertainment, if the word of God's in there, you're going to find power and you're going to find strength. Because the power and strength is in the what? Word. But we have an epidemic in the body of Christ where most believers don't want to take time reading their word. They don't want to study. They don't want to meditate. We have an easy gospel. Give it to me in the microwave. I can get it down, it, digest it, and go with it. Bless you, man of God. Bless you. But they don't want to get it where they can get a full down revelation of God's word. So in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37, just read that real fast. I'm going to break it down. I promise I get out your way. I'm not here to kill your mood. I'm here to uplift you in faith. Amen. I say glory to God. Glory to God. I say I want the word. I want the word. I say I want the word. I want the word. How many want the word for real? Come on. Come on. The Bible said in the book of Psalms 3 and 20, he sent his word. His word did what? Healed them and delivered them from all their sins. Psalms 103 and 20 say he sent his word. His word healed them, delivered them from all their sins, their iniquity. So right now, God is sending his word. Read if you could, man of God. Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 10. 
the valley of dry bones. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied and I was commanded. And, I, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them as they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Bless your word in Jesus' name. He said, can these bones live? Them bones. Can these bones live? And one of the key words in that is that them. He said, prophesy to them. Because this was a valley of bones that was in a valley that was dead. They was deceased. They was all gone. And this man of God walked around it and God gave him a vision and said, can these bones live? He told him to prophesy to these bones because they was dead, they was dry. And what that represents is a people that is dry, that is lukewarm, that is not on fire. It represents something that don't have the full life of God or the full strength of God. So he said, can these bones live? He told this prophet to prophesy to them. Somebody say them. Do you know we are them, them? Them. We are them. We are the bones that Jesus is talking about through the scriptures right here about prophesy to them. You talk about the word speaking unto them. You're looking at a revelation of something that's very unique. When you hear the word them, what you normally think about is a racist term. I know for black folks, they say you people. For Hispanics, they say them people. So it's always something negative to come down to them and you people. But God say prophesy to them. Which meaning, when you look at that word, them or you people, in a negative way, God didn't, get, God didn't say go to those people. He said go to them people, which meaning God was talking about a particular people, which meaning something that had a unique calling upon them. That word them mean this. That word them mean it describes something with an issue or a problem. It describes something with an issue or a problem. So he said prophesy to them, which meaning them had an issue. And had a problem. But God said you speak life unto them. You speak grace unto them. And them bones should live. Do you know we are those thems. That was back in the days. Bound with drugs. Locked up. Incarcerated. We was those them. Chasing skirts. We was those them. Stealing and robbing. We was them back in the days. Let the church say amen. Oh, okay. now, we all ain't come from a street of gold. But once we was them. We was out them doing the bad things, robbing, stealing, killing, whatever we was doing back in the days, we represent them. But God said he came, prophesied to us when life came on us, God shifted our mentality to where now those things that was dead in us, God resurrected. And what God want to do to us as a church, he want the church to be mandated to get a revelation on what it is to go to the kingdom to advance. And God gave me three things to say and I'm out of your way. God says it's up to us to bring them in. Somebody shout, bring them in. It's up to us to bring them in with the word of God. We have to bring them in 
with the word. That meaning we can't use our opinion. We can't use what our mama told us, what our daddy told us. We got to study the word to show ourselves more proof of unto the word to bring them in with the word because it's only the word that's going to keep them. The Bible says heaven and earth going to pass, but my word shall never pass away. So we're going to bring folks in. We must use the word and not our opinion. We can't use Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry. We can't use none of that. We must use God's scriptures, God's word to bring them in. I came in through the word. I came into the Word. I was bound with drugs. I was out there bad. I was doing some crazy things. And I had an old grandmama. She used to always tell me to trust God. And on my way to go see my auntie, there was a shooting on the west side of Chicago. Of course, the game on the west side of Chicago by 26 California. You guys know what it was. It was shooting. And by me being from a different race, they automatically assumed I was something else. And they began to shoot. And there was eight bullets that went through the car. My friend got shot six times. I never got touched by the grace of God. Because God's grace was on me. And even then, I still didn't get saved. I still didn't go shot in church. I still didn't buck and shout. Matter of fact, I went out and got high. I celebrated my life. I just, I just dodged some bullets. And then it took another time for my mother to tell me about trusting God. Only then, I was getting ready to see my son born. My first son was getting ready to be born. And I was going to the hospital to see him being born. Now, the night before that, I had went out and got ugly high on some Mad Dog 2020, some eight. I was just ugly high. And seeing my son getting born, I literally passed out in the hospital, woke up next to my wife with an IV in my arm. So when I came to, I was like, what happened? You passed out. And at that moment, I seen a revelation. God is awesome. God is awesome. Only God can give life. Only God can give life. And we must honor our women. We must honor these mothers because God gave them a creation and a miracle to produce life. We shouldn't be talking about them with all these crazy rap songs. We don't care about none of that. We must honor our mothers, honor our aunties, honor our sisters. We must honor the women of God. Come on, man. Let's let the man say amen. amen. And not only that, that time I said revelation from God, God came to God. Not received deliverance from God. And at that moment, my life changed. I said, I would never, never go back to the street again. Come on. I'm going to finish this up real quick. I didn't need a 12-step program to get free from drugs. Amen. Jesus. I was shacking. I went and got married the next day. Yeah, you shouldn't be shacking. You guys about shacking, right? I had a stolen car, I was driving, I, had to, I, I took the stolen car back to the owner. I ain't turned myself in, I just left the keys and left. I ain't that crazy. I did everything trusting God. And from that, God took me, a man that was bust, bound on drugs. Bound on drugs. Dropped out of high school. Couldn't read. Left high school at a sixth grade level. Never got a college education. Took me, sent me across the world to preach the gospel. Gave me three beautiful kids. My oldest son is in the army, married with a wife. My daughter is army, and my daughter is in the army, also military police. My youngest son is doing awesome, great things. God gave me three beautiful kids. Gave me a job that I don't even qualify for the status. First of all, I don't even have a degree to do the job I'm doing. But God, grace, only God can take a man with his once. Doing jumping jacks. Doing jumping jacks butt naked in the mirror. <laughs> Awful cocaine. Only God can turn a person like that around. When people say, them can't do it, prophesy to them. When people say, them can't do it, prophesy to them. Number two, bring them in, build them up, and send them out. That is the church mandate. To bring them in, somebody shout, bring them in, Amen. build them up, Amen. and send them, out. send them out. When we take that mandate, we're going to see nations change, we're going to see communities change, we're going to see lives change. When people was asking the apostle, you going to this rap event, you are an apostle, you should be over there with them young folks, and they're going to be jumping around. You know what? Anywhere where the presence of God is, I am them. Anywhere where God's grace is, I am them. 
And I love Brain Trail too, so I'm definitely going to be. I'm, I am there. But by God's grace, I'm going to finish up. But by God's grace, by God's grace, it is our mandate to bring them in with the word. To build them up with the word. Not our opinions. Not our opinions. And to send them out with the word. With the word. The problem with the folks that's going out, they don't have enough word in them. Not enough words. Not enough word. I encourage you, I admonish you, my sisters and brothers. Study your word. Study your word. I admonish all the artists. Put the word in the message. I admonish you. You guys are the torch carriers. You are the remnant people, the next generation, the chosen ones, the called out ones. God's giving you something miraculous in this hour, in this minute. You believe that? Amen. Raise your hands one more time. I'm going to prophesy to you guys and let you go. But first of all, man, God, I've seen God doing something for you. I seen the building. You were standing in front of a building. I don't know if it was a house. I ain't one of the prophets. I said, hey, it's a security number. Five. I'm not a normal prophet. But I see you standing in front of a building. You were standing in front of the building and you was knocking. And somebody was behind the door. They was debating about letting you in. They was debating about letting you in. Now, I see as you was up here singing, and God showed me the moment that person let you in. They're going to receive a breakthrough in the healing. So it's somebody that God is sending you to that they're scared to open that door. But God said the moment they open the door, they're going to get a healing and breakthrough. So I want you to keep knocking, brother. Because that personal life is like, lift your hands up again. Lift your hands up one more time. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sons and daughters. I, your father, have touched you. I, your father, have ministered to you. And even in this hour, I'm taking you to new levels of faith, says the father. There's been some things been hindering you even before you got here. There were some circumstances and situations that try to block you. But yet, my daughter, you press, you came. And even my daughter, you knew the hand was on empty and you was pressing. My daughter, you came. And before you leave my daughter, because you trust me to make it to my house to get in my presence, I will reward you. And yes, that's even some things that I'm shifting in your life, says the Father. Things that you've been praying about, seeking about. There are some things in 2019 that never came into fruition. And it will say, even in this hour, before you leave this service, I'm going to begin to manifest some things in your life, says the Father. And yes, there's even some marriages coming back together, says God. There's been some separation. There's been some foul place, says God. But God said, I'm causing that man to repent. I see that man repenting on his knees before God right now. And God says, he's going to come back to you washed and clean. There's also deliverance taking place inside of his heart, says the Father. And even you that's been seeking some help in your finances. You've been asking this person, asking that person. God said, don't ask no more. I'm I'm going to cause them to bless you. I'm going to cause them to come to you, says the Father. For you are not a beggar. You are not one that go around begging. You are my lender. You are the one that give. And God said, I will make you a lender in this hour. For even in this hour, I will raise up a mighty army, a sent people, a called people, a chosen people. And yes, you are my people. Take not this moment lightly, for this is the ordained moment for me, says the Father. I have ordained my presence, ordained my power, ordained my word. Even before the service is over, there should be some ordinations in the Spirit says the Father, your calling, your purpose will be revealed even in this hour. I remove every spirit of hindrance, every demonic attack, every hindrance spirit says the Father, it is broken even now. It is broken even now. It is broken even now. I hear the chains breaking even now, says the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah.